I hope everyone's having a great day today. I am Mr. Ish. Thank you for joining me for this excellent conceptual video where we are examining how we can go about determining the area of a parabola. But that title is vague. We should better write it as parabolic arch. And that would be a best way of titling this video because when you're looking at a regular parabola, it has in this particular instance a domain going from zero up to infinity. When you're looking at this in terms of a range, you're going from zero up to infinity. It's not a polygon because it's open-ended. You have to look at a parabolic arch and then in that particular instance, you're closing it off by means of a chord and now you can come up with a good area formula. Generally, we know that the area of a parabolic arch is two or three base times height. But how is this formula derived? We're looking at that. Integral calculus does not play a very easy or convenient role in the derivation of that formula, but rather, Archimedes' method of exhaustion is the way of looking at it because much of the groundwork has already been done by him in terms of the geometry behind it. However, integral calculus is an excellent means of verifying your outcomes in terms of parabolic arch area calculations. So let's look at a good representation of a parabolic arch which can be just this right here. This parabolic arch has a certain height, we'll call that h, it has a certain base we'll call that b you're looking at that and you're seeing the two or three base times height come from here we're looking at all of this area over here but i won't make this diagram messy because i want to show you the method of exhaustion requires us to look at the total sum of the triangles we can draw in it if we are looking at this large triangle we can call that t1 or we can also just call it a t because everything will be based off on this t i've drawn this one large triangle and it's my main triangle but here in this outlying space I can draw another triangle or another set of triangles and I'll call these my T2 triangles and I'll just put T2 over here. I still have space over here but it'll get messy but I can draw another set of triangles and there are technically four I can draw right here. I have one T1, I have two T2s and I have four T3s. I won't draw more than that but obviously you can magnify and go further into this and keep drawing more and more triangles but with my human hand and with our eyes, the space limitation will get very messy. What do we realize when we look at all of this? I'm saying T1 is synonymous with T. We realize that the sum of these T2 triangles is equal to one fourth of your T1 triangle or you can just say your main triangle. We also see through his work, the method of exhaustion work by Archimedes, Geometrically, we also know that the sum of these T3 triangles is equal to 1 16th of your main T1 or your T triangle. And then obviously by means of that work he's already done for us, the sum of the T4 triangles will be 1 or 64 the T triangles. But you're seeing a pattern over here. If you were to add up all of these, starting with here and then here, here, all of these circle items, if you were to add them all and keep going on and on, you're getting all the triangles sums within this parabolic arch the total sum of those triangles will equal the area under this parabolic arch but you can represent it very well in this way t plus t over 4 plus t over 16 plus t over 64 on and on you can isolate the t you're looking at 1 plus 1 over 4 plus 1 over 16 plus 1 over 64 and the series can continue on i have erased all of this so we can look at this now when you're looking at these numbers right here, you're seeing an infinite geometric series. Because each of these items or quotients is getting smaller, you know it's tending towards zero. I'm not saying the sum is tending towards zero, I'm saying the numerical value of these quotients is tending towards zero. We have a common ratio over here, you can do a n divided by a n minus one, a nth term and the term before. Pick any of these, one over 64 divided by one over 16 you'll do 1 over 64 times 16 over 1 and you will get a common ratio of 1 over 4. If a common ratio is less than 1, you know you're looking at a geometric series that's convergent. Therefore, there must be a finite value coming out of this infinite geometric series. The sum of that from 1 up to infinity or why don't we write it as this? Going from 1 up to infinity, we're looking at a formula of this infinite geometric series which will be a1 divided by 1 minus r. My a1 term is 1 and then we have 1 minus 1 over 4 which will be 1 divided by 3 over 4 and that will be 4 over 3. But this 4 over 3 represents everything from this parentheses which still has to hit with this t. 
and we could have technically put the t out here at the very beginning so our end result is 4 over 3 t what does 4 over 3 t tell you it tells you the area of all of these secondary tertiary quaternary all of these triangles is equal to 4 over 3 times the area of this main triangle now if you're looking here at a triangle and you know a triangle area is half base times height which you can say is equal to an area of a triangle this t can substitute for this which can substitute for right over here what you are ending up seeing is 4 over 3 times bh over 2 which represents t when you simplify this 2 goes over there you have 2 base times height divided by 3 and that right there is how this formula comes about the area under a parabolic arch or you can say the area of a parabolic arch but see we're looking here at a series application or you can even say we're looking at a limit of sums over here but we're not bringing an integral calculus we have derived this formula for you now let me show you what the benefit of the integral calculus is in all of this if you have a function f of x is equal to 36 minus x squared the benefit of integral calculus is to verify your numerical outcomes you have this what are we looking at in terms of a graph we're going up over here to an apex vertex which is 0 comma 36 you can solve for x and you'll get plus and minus 6 comma 0 minus 6 comma 0 and 6 comma 0 I know now my height is 36 I know my base is 6 minus minus 6 which is 12 put everything through that formula and you solve for the area under this parabolic arch and it'll be 36 times 12 times 2 divided by 3 288 is our answer the area over here is 288 the integral calculus has an excellent role that it can confirm that answer for you you're looking here from minus 6 to 6 our function is that 36 minus x squared dx integrate this you have 36 x minus x cube over 3 but we have an even function over here parabolas which are located in an up and down manner across the y-axis are even functions symmetric about that y-axis and you can do 0 to 6 and a 2 and that's exactly what I want to do because it simplifies the computation and I have a 2 sitting out here put 6 down and put 0 you'll have a 2 times 216 minus 216 over 3 simplify the part in the parentheses it'll be a 648 minus 216 over 3 you will get 2 times 432 over 3 and multiply that 2 times 432 divided by 3 you get 288 288 and that's the benefit here of the integral calculus procedure you don't have to rely on that formula though it's very easy you can rely on your integral calculus procedure to verify a numerical outcome the Archimedes method of exhaustion using triangles as our basis of determining the area below this arch is the way to do it the integral calculus just supplements or complements that way in terms of a verification procedure that's what I wanted to show you here in this video have a great day bye